trying to find a cure for it before she starts losing her own memory. Wow. That's the nutshell version of what it is. <laughs> yeah, wow. how'd, you, how'd you get into that character? Uh, um, you know, because it seems like it, it was, it, it might be some dark material to have to, you know, take in like that. Yeah, it was, uh, there were some tough parts just, um, n yeah, knowing um, the mindset of somebody who sort of knows that they're probably going to die young and um, I did a lot of research on uh, on Alzheimer's and, and just like genetics, which was something I didn't know a lot about. Um, yeah, there there's lots of lots of research involved. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's talk to uh, your transition into television and and film as well. Uh, so, what was your what would you say was your first you know break into that? Yeah. It was kind of a large one at the time. I did I, I did one episode of Drop Dead Diva, which Melanie Mayron directed, who is of from Thirty Something. Yeah. For those of thir certain generation, will recognize her. Oh, yeah. um, and she was so. I mean, it was just a, a small, you know, like my Walking Dead role. Not not a whole lot, but. Um, the director was super, uh, super great. And she said, I'm coming back to town to direct Mean Girls 2 this summer. I want you to audition. And this was about five years ago. So I was still playing a lot of teenagers and young roles and, um, came back. She cast me in a, a large role in that. And that was sort of how I really got the feel for what it was like to perform on camera and be on a set and, um, yeah, she kind of gave me a big jump start in that. Okay. And what, what was that whole experience like uh, doing uh, Mean Girls 2? It was fun. It was kind of silly. And, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't anywhere close to Mean Girls. <laughs> you know, it was sort of trying to be a copycat of that. And, um, but it was good for me. It was, it was a fun experience. Um, just to see what it's like to be on a set for that length of time and um and and yeah just learning how to act on set and how to act for the camera rather than just the stage mm. so uh what what kind of characters do you like to play do you like to play the the damsel in distress uh, maybe <laughs> the the badass no. the, the <laughs> badass? it depends i love variety so i love that i've been able to play a, a lot of different things. Um, I, you know, I tend to go in for maybe kind of the more innocent roles. Um, although lately I've been getting good, like stuff with some good, like, um, I don't know, guts to them. And, um, so that's fun. Mm. So, uh, the, so, uh, you played the, they got you pegged as the innocent girl. Um, <laughs> Sometimes, so, not always. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, how do you how do you make that character interesting? Because sometimes it's uh, it's the baddies that are you know the ones that everybody uh, gravitates to. Right. Yeah, I guess it depends. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a of an innocent character that I've played recently. Um, mo most people probably know Glass Menagerie, Laura, who is sort of a recluse. Um, but like once I started reading, I just kept reading the play over and over and realized like, she's not just a recluse, like she's, there's some, some serious mental things going on, but then like how much she loves her brother and there's always, there are always layers to a character, so. I always try to go for that and not just what what's on the surface. Mm. Now, um, now let's let's get to uh, The Walking Dead. Uh, obviously, yeah. being in Atlanta, you know, a, a lot of the actors there, um, you know, want to uh, work on the show in some capacity. And you said that uh, you tried out for it many times. What season was the first time you uh, you tried out for it? I actually read for Maggie. Really? So okay. Um, but I think Lauren Cohen is amazing. Um, I read, yeah, I read for Maggie a few times. Um, 
that obviously didn't happen. Um, and yeah, I've probably auditioned every season at least once for a, a lot of times. I don't even know what I'm auditioning for. They don't send you real sides mm -hmm. always. So you audition. Sometimes I audition and then I'll see it in the episode, but most of the time, I don't know what it was that I would have ended up booking. <laughs> and this role I actually did not audition for. Um, I just auditioned several times this season uh, and Scott Gimple actually emailed me himself and asked me to do this role and said it wasn't much, but from what he had seen in my auditions, he, he really wanted somebody who could um, sort of emotionally connect to this moment because it was really important for Morgan. He didn't say Morgan at the time. It was very secretive and hush hush, but um, it was very nice to hear from him personally. It was pretty cool for me because I'm a fan of the show too. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, your, your character has a, uh, a brief encounter with Morgan, and, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a very pivotal, uh, you know, scene. What was it like, first uh, working on the set as well as working with Lenny James it it was great it was it was a fast experience um but everybody I had heard I mean I've had several friends my husband was on the show too actually um and it, everybody said that it's just one of the best sets to work on because it's like a family there and people are so gracious and helpful um even to you know, day players, and uh, and it was, it was, it was really, everyone was very kind and helpful, um, and then, yeah, of course, Lenny James was um, actually one of the most helpful, <laughs> because, again, they don't give you any of, any more of the script than what you're in, even, like, the rest of the page is, you know, <laughs> lighted out, so um, he, like, came over and, you know, asked me if I knew what was going on and made sure that I was aware of kind of the surroundings of the circumstances and the timeline that we were in and, um, you know, just very, very kind and helpful and was very nice afterwards. And Yeah. Mm. I'm a fan of his, too. <laughs> He's a fantastic actor. He's done quite a good yeah. job. Uh, in the, yeah, it's amazing in that episode. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, now the uh, the man that you were um, in the scene with, who I guess he he played a, a boyfriend or or something like that, or a husband or what what not. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, how was it like working with, with him? Uh, he was super nice. Yeah, he lives in Asheville, and um, same thing. He had auditioned for the show a few times, and I actually I think they did have him audition for this role. They, you know, he didn't say anything in the scene, but I think they had him improvise some things for the audition mm -hmm. but yeah he was nice and excited to be there too mm -hmm. yeah um now let's talk about uh your costume um they had to get you real dirty for the, for the show so what did, what did they actually do to get you you know looking like you're in the uh, zombie apocalypse it's so funny i you know usually you go you go to set and you don't wear any makeup because you don't know what they're going to do like they want you to be a, a you know clean palette and then they always you know make you look so good so i go in the trailer with no makeup the makeup trailer not wearing any makeup and all they do is they have like these sponges and this brown oily paint stuff and they just start <laughs> you know putting it on my face and my neck and my hands and i was like that's it. And then I, I joked later, I look at the episode and I'm like, I should have had them at least draw my eyebrows on. Um, but, and then they, they took my hair and I don't know what they put in, some kind of oil and the, the costume that I, I tried it on a few days before. And then I get there and it's, you know, kind of slashed up and covered in brown spray paint. And so, um, yeah, it was like, a, you know, a brand new clothes that they messed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh man! So, um, so you you thought you were going to wear a nice outfit, and then uh, you get there, and it's just all shredded. Huh? It's all it's shredded. <laughs> I was like, these are nice jeans. Why'd you have to ruin them? <laughs> oh man! Uh, so, um, how we have a question in the, in the box there. Oh. Uh, zombies look really scary on television. How is it like interacting with them in real life? I. When I first saw that guy, I was I was scared. I thought like if I had been alone, I would have screamed. I would have screamed. It's that scary up close. And it's funny because I shot the episode before I w I hadn't caught up yet, so I was like a season behind. I after I shot the episode, I went back and watched season five, and then caught up with season six. And I saw that same guy in, I think, two other episodes before. So they reused some of the ones like him. He's just perfect. He's this tall, thin, um, kind of, he's got this hunched over thing. He's perfect. Um, and so I, I recognized him in a couple other episodes, too, because he's just got a great look for it. And he was super nice, too. Like, when I heard him talking, I was just like, okay. It's okay. It's just makeup. It's a real person. <laughs> uh, was it, do you know what his name was? Was his name Ben? I don't remember. Oh, okay. I'm the worst. <laughs> we shot it a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, was it hard to get all that stuff off of you when it was over? I don't remember. I, I don't think so. I think I just took a shower. Oh, okay. There was no, like, there was no just, like, wiping it off. It was definitely a shower it off kind of situation. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, are, you, are you a fan of the horror genre? Uh, um, no. <laughs> no, I started watching it because I auditioned for Maggie, and I was like, well, I need to watch this show so I can, like, so when I audition for it, I'll know what's going on, I'll know what's happening, and um, thinking I wouldn't like it. But then I just started getting into the story, and I love it. I do close my eyes sometimes, but not always. I'm getting braver. <laughs> hey, I know I know people who watch it religiously, and they will cover their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Why, like, why do you watch it if you got to cover your eyes? But it's the same. <laughs> you can still hear like flesh and bones and chewing, so it doesn't really guard you from that much. Yeah, the, the sound. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Uh, you mentioned that the walker that you encountered in your in your shot, they had used him in a previous episode. Is that is that common? Could you like say, for example, could you be used in a future episode as a walker? Probably, but I would have to be in like I would have to be an extra, and I yeah. can't do that. <laughs> and they are in makeup for ev. I mean, they have to go through so much. From what I hear, I have a couple friends that have done it, and they're. They're in makeup for a really long time. Um, and I think so. I think I know, like, one friend that I have has done, like, I think two or three different episodes. Maybe one where he was really featured and then, you know, another one where he's, like, in a crowd scene so that you don't get used to seeing the same ones. But, yeah, um, yeah I think they they work pretty regularly. <laughs> cool. The ones you see the most, they, they call those the hero walkers, uh, the ones that are up, uh, they're going to interact, like the one that probably was with you is what they term a hero walker, because they give them more detail and more makeup and everything else, and then if they're like a crowd walker, they have a little bit less makeup or detail to their makeup, and if it's, if they're one of the background, uh, you know, background uh, walkers, yeah, they get a little, they get a little bit on their hands and maybe a little bit on their face, but they always tell them to keep their head down so that the, so that they don't. So you, you have this herd of walkers that are all gray and everything, and you get one in the middle that pops his head up and he's not got any makeup on. He have to go in, and, you know, cancel him out. So you got to keep your heads down <laughs> on the, for the walkers. Right, I, that I, makes yeah, sense. So, yeah, I've I've got. Uh, about three or four friends of mine that are uh, walker or repeat walkers. They're they're the hero walkers. So. The hero walkers. I like that. Did they tell you how long they had to be in in makeup? Oh yeah, they, it's like they 
get there, they get on the set like at six in the morning and they may not be actually used until like, you know, one o'clock or so. They're, they're in makeup for a long time. Yeah. Uh,